Hey guys, can everyone hear me? Can you guys see my screen? Uh, just type in the chat. Just want to make sure that everyone can see me, see my screen, and they can hear what I'm saying before we get started. I've got the agenda on the screen right now, so you should be able to see that. All right, then let's get started. Okay, so just a brief recap for you guys who are just joining this episode. In the last live stream, which was last Wednesday, we started a new series called How to Make an App from Scratch. And this is where I'm gonna take an app idea that I have uh, created uh, live from scratch, uh, no pre-planning and anything like that, so that you guys can see step-by-step -step the whole entire app process. Um, and then we're gonna launch it into the App Store together. Uh, now we're on episode two, and I'm gonna do a quick, just very brief recap on what we did in the last lesson. But before that, I totally forgot. Uh, welcome to the Code with Chris live stream. Uh, Adrian is manning the chat, so uh, make sure you guys don't spam the chat because he's gonna be moderating it. Type all your questions in one message. Uh, don't break it up so that he can easily uh, manage all of the messages and the questions for the end of the live stream. Uh, we also have recording on this live stream, so it's gonna be uh, available to watch after the fact in case you miss any bit of it. And if you're watching this live stream, uh, the replay of it, you guys can check the description. We'll have little timestamps and you can click on those to jump to different uh, points of the live stream so you don't have to watch. But you guys who are here watching live, I appreciate you guys so very much, okay? so. Uh, and you guys will get your questions answered too. So that's the benefit of attending this live. You guys, we can do some interaction. I can get to know you guys and you guys can get to know me as well. Okay, cool. So let me do that quick recap. In the last lesson, I re well, not last lesson, but last live stream, I revealed what my app idea was, which was to create a Pomodoro timer. And Pomodoro is just a technique to stay productive where you set timers for uh, your work sessions and your break sessions. Uh, but the twist on this app idea is to add a social aspect to it. So you can have friends and you can encourage each other and challenge each other to complete more Pomodoros. And Pomodoros are just 25 minute chunks of work time. So in the last lesson, we also took a look at the App Store to see what kind of other Pomodoro timers there were, and there are a ton, but we didn't find any that had social features integrated into it. And we also came up with some features and requirements as you can see on the screen right now. So we took all of those features and requirements and we broke it up into like a core feature set, kind of our minimal viable product that we're gonna get launched right away. And this is going to, at least for me, get me motivated to do more. And we can also get feedback um, and incorporate that into subsequent incremental updates. Because for me, if I tackle a really large project and you know I wanna make it completely perfect and have all these features before I launch it, chances are life is gonna occur, you know, something's gonna happen with my kid, you know, other priorities are going to come up and that project is not going to get finished. So uh, my priority is to get the a useful version of this app. It has to be at least useful, right? Or else no one's going to use it. A bare minimum useful version of this app into the app store um, so that people can start using it and giving me feedback on it. Now, I think that aside from the social features, um, that is gonna differentiate this Pomodoro timer from the rest of them out there, uh, we also probably need to differentiate uh, our, you know, what's gonna make our version better is through the user experience and the UI. So that's gonna have a lot to do with it. So things like um, how things animate, uh, how easy it is to use, because I did mention in the previous live stream that I downloaded a couple to try. There were some I couldn't even figure out how to use it. And it, we're talking about timer, right? So it has to be very intuitive to use. Uh, so in this live stream, what I'm going to do um, is I'm gonna, I have some ideas about how the app is gonna look, at least this V1 and we're gonna start with wireframing it out. And if you're not sure what that means, it's basically like a sketch. I actually did this on a piece of paper first. So I took a pencil, 
I took a piece of paper and I started just doodling and, and plotting out my ideas, getting them onto paper um, in a rough form. And in today's live stream, I'm going to uh, use a graphics app and then we are going to kind of clean it up and uh, make it look like proper wireframes <laughs> that you would submit to a client or something like that. Um, well, not that proper because there's going to be a lot more detail that goes into a document like that if your client is gonna pay you a ton of money. But uh, for our purposes, as long as we know, you know where our main elements are gonna be laid out, like where, where the timer is gonna be running, where the start and stop buttons are and stuff like that, um, that gives me enough confidence to move on. Another thing that I mentioned uh, in the last live stream was that one of the challenges that I foresee is how to have the timer run in the background. I know it's possible because, hey, other Pomodoro apps are out there in the app store, right? But I just technically didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, I didn't do it before. So from since the last live stream, I went away and did some research. I did some tests and I figured it out. And it's not what you think. At least it's not how I thought it would be done. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that too. So we're going to do a little demo uh, and I'm going to show you how to run timers in the background. All right, so we're gonna get started with the wireframe portions now. Oh, I'm glad to see that there are so many people here. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Uh, again, if you're just joining, this will be recorded, so you're gonna be able to watch the live stream afterwards. All right, so let's get started with the wireframe. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do this in Sketch. Uh, if you're not sure what this is, um, it's just the graphics app that where where people, it's like the most popular one where people are building their uh, designing their app graphic assets here. Another one that's free, this one's not free. Um, another one that's free is called Figma, which is actually very similar. So I would go ahead and check that out. Now I, I would use Figma just to show you guys and I said I would, but the fact is I haven't done this yet and I'm just not as confident in Figma as I am in Sketch, even though they are pretty similar. And so I don't wanna waste your guys' time while I'm doing this live. And so I'm gonna use the program I'm a little familiar, a little more familiar with. But uh, just for you guys who have, are just starting to get into uh, designing app graphics for your app, um, I would definitely check out Figma first before you go and pay for something like Sketch. Um, back then when I bought a license for Sketch, Figma wasn't out yet. And you can see here, I'm actually using a, I think I'm like two versions behind from the latest version of Sketch because they changed the interface in the latest version. So it actually, um, I hear that it's a little bit different, but it's not like all that different. So I haven't upgraded yet. All right, so first what we're going to do is we're gonna create an artboard, uh, which is just like an, a frame of your of your iPhone. So we can choose from a couple of different ones here. Uh, I'm going to work with the iPhone, I guess it will be iPhone SE right now. So you kind of want to work with the iPhone size that is most common, right? So you want to make sure definitely that your app looks perfect with that. Uh, and then depending on if the screen size is larger or smaller, you can, um, you can design a different set if it's going to be all that different. Uh, but you do want to be working on kind of the most common size. And just to remind you guys, this is basically a timer. And V1 here, let me just bring up the features. Maybe I should do that so that we kind of know what we're actually wireframing out here. So to do a quick recap, in V1, we have three timers, right? We have a 25 minute timer, that's the work timer. Right? We have a five minute break timer. So after every 25 minutes, you're gonna take a five minute break. Uh, we also have a longer break timer. So I think it's every four Pomodoros that you finish, you get to take a longer break. And this is actually like 15 to 30 minutes long, uh, according to Wikipedia, because I wasn't sure about this. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, a short break is like three to five minutes and a longer break is 15 to 30 minutes. In V1, I didn't make it customizable and I'm, I'm starting to think about whether or not I should make it customizable, but I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm just going to set it to 25 minutes. Like this might be a deal breaker for some people who follow the Pomodoro technique, 
um, if the timer isn't customizable and they're used to using like a, a 15 minute break or a 30 minute break, like this app, this V1 will be too inflexible for them to use. So I might consider actually, you know, putting this timer feature into V1, but I'm going to see what sort of time, like what sort of timeline this ends up being, because I do want to get this out the door, hopefully like in a week to a week and a half. And, you know, if this is going to be more work, like a week more work, I, I would probably just launch it anyways. Um, because the thing with these apps is that um, these days, I feel like there are so many apps out there. There's so many new apps coming out every day that your app isn't very discoverable. So if you really do want your app to be successful, you need to have a marketing plan. You can't just like launch your app and expect, oh, everyone's going to download it and try it and use it. It's, it's almost like even if I publish this app into the app store, no one is going to know about it unless I you know, have some sort of marketing push or I build up an audience beforehand with a landing page or something like that and, and build up that anticipation for it. Well, I mean, you guys will know. So like, you guys will download it, right? Hopefully. But um, that's why I'm not not as concerned. If Even if we publish this V1 um, with these kind of like fixed timers, we can release this ability to customize the durations of the timers. We can release this as an update, you know, fairly soon after all right so in v1 we basically have three timers uh, the ability to start them pause and resume and to stop the timer right that's it so this interface is actually pretty simple now the idea that i had was i wanted to be a uh, very clean and distraction free because that's the whole point of getting work done right so i don't want to like busy the interface with a whole bunch of text and all that stuff and so my idea basically revolves around uh, a circle so the oval first right I'm gonna put a circle here and I want it to look kind of like the Apple rings uh, sorry Apple watch rings I don't know if you have an Apple watch but um, it tries to get you to do exercise and it gets you to try to fill these rings and you see them in the commercials and the keynotes all the time so I want to kind of make a ring like that that maybe glows a little bit. We'll see how we treat it design wise, but um, basically want to have a ring like that. So it's kind of like a progress ring, right? And then I'm going to have the timer in the middle, the time. Oh, I should actually use San Francisco. Let's see if I have that. Oh, I don't have that installed on this machine actually. So I'll just use Helvetica doesn't really matter. These aren't the design composites. The design composites, you actually want them to look, you know, how they're going to look, the actual app. But this one is just going to be wireframe. So the whole idea of this one is that you can see how things are going to be positioned, where, where things are going to be positioned, so that when you actually build them out, um, you see them. So it's going to be something like that. Um, and then there's going to be a start and a stop, but here's the thing. So how do we switch from this work timer, which is the 25 minutes to um, the, the long break and the short break? So my idea was actually to have a couple more rings and you would just swipe around. So like you would see basically this ring here and we can name this like, this would be the long break and maybe that would be a different color. Right, and then we'd have this one here, like on this side, and we would have this as like, oops. So I wanna make sure that they're the same distance. So let's say like 50, yeah, 50 and 50. So this would be, let's say the short break, and this oval would be the time, and if you were to, uh, let's say, switch timers, you would basically swipe your finger left or right to get the other rings. So it would kind of look like this, like you would swipe the rings across and then this would kind of click into place and then this would change to like five minutes uh, or something like that, whatever that uh, timer ends up being. Did I just lose a ring? Oh, yeah, I lost the ring. All right. 
So we would basically swipe it this way and you would get the, the long break. And if you kind of swipe it back to the middle, you have the 25 minute timer. Uh, and then once you start the timer, uh, the, the, these two edges, these two rings are going to go away. So I'm going to show that in a different artboard. So this is kind of, let's name this artboard like the uh, initial, initial state. Let's just call it initial. And I'm going to use my icons eight subscription here. And I'm just going to start, uh, look for a play button. I don't even want text on it. I'm just going to have like a play button here. And that's going to be kind of like to start that timer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this whole artboard. And this one's going to be called uh, timer running. So when the timer is running, this is going to change into a pause button. Okay, and there's also going to be a stop button. But the thing is, I don't want to put them close together because it's going to be really annoying if you accidentally stop your timer when you didn't mean to stop your timer, right? So it's going to be far enough apart like that. You know, this would be running. So let's say this runs down to like running like that and these two rings would actually be hidden at that point so your timer will only be like this when the timer is running uh, I might actually end up moving these buttons a little lower to be honest so if we could have let's say if we could have all this stuff actually centered like well, let's move this out of the way first. Let's try to center this stuff in the middle of the screen. It seems a little low because the screens are actually pretty long. Like the new iPhone 10 Max or 10S Max, which is what I have, is actually a pretty, it's a pretty long screen. Um, and these buttons, we should actually put it closer to the bottom edge of the screen because if you imagine yourself holding a phone, right? your thumb can't reach very high, like your thumb, unless you have a really, really long thumb, but most thumbs just kind of reach the bottom, maybe 25% or whatever. A user experience expert would be able to tell you the exact percentage or average, but a good idea would be to put the buttons closer to the bottom of the screen. So if you are using your phone with one hand, you can hit this uh, start button. So let's put these guys back down here as well. And we'll just move all of these guys. Now I'm not going like pixel perfect here. Um, these are just going to be our wireframes, but for our excuse me for our design composites, we will want to we will want to take a little more care on those to make sure that you know they're an accurate guide for the developer who's developing it. Now let me see. Just to remind myself, I did write this. Uh, I did kind of draw this out on a sheet of paper first. Oh, I forgot one element. Yeah, so I wanted to have a, when you're selecting which timer you're gonna use initially up here, I wanted a label. So this would be called you know, Pomodoro or something. Uh, make this, you know, we need to label the timers. So this would be, you know, Pomodoro. Uh, why don't we insert another state here? So this would be the timer running state. This would be um, selecting a timer. Let's change this to be like a short, short break. Oops. So in a short break, right? Uh, these circles would move let's say they swipe this ring it clicks into place here and the ring might even be a different color so this would be that right there all right 
so it wasn't quite in the middle. This is probably not in the middle too. Uh, in Sketch, if you hold down the, what is this, the Alt button, um, you can kind of get some, and then you can move your mouse and you can see where the distances are. That's really, really useful to do. All right, so now we have our timer running state. Um, do I still want the label there? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll just dim it out or something like that. Because like I said, I want it to be sort of distraction free, as clean as possible. I'm just making, uh, just double checking what I have in my sketches and my doodles. All right, so when the timer stops, like let's say it's run out, um, this is going to change, it's going to be just one button and it's going to be a restart button. And then these rings are going to come back. So I'm going to do another thing here. We'll call this like timer end. So this is going to be like zero, maybe zero, 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 zero. And then let's come here. Icon eight is so good guys so worth the money at least to me <laughs> because i also uh use it for oh, let me zoom in a little bit here now these icons might not end up being the ones i use but for now it's it's completely fine you know when the timer runs out this label is going to come back oops and then the rings are also going to come back. Oops, not on this one, but on this one. This wasn't a short break. This was a Pomodoro. OK, and I thought about um, not everyone would want kind of a distraction free interface. So for example, here, when the timer is running, this should be hidden. When the timer is running, some people might like background of some sort. Um, and some people might like quotes. So one of you guys, Iona, you mentioned that having motivational quotes would be awesome. So I think that's a great idea, right? For some people, we'll have the option to turn it off or on. Uh, so we can have kind of like little motivational quotes appear as the timer's running. Uh, also backgrounds, right? Having some sort of moving background or maybe like a tomato vine that grows as, as the timer runs would be really cool. So these are the sorts of things that could be premium add-ons, right? They could be like in-app purchases. So it's not crucial to have. I don't want anyone to have to like buy it to to use it, to make good use out of it. Out of it. But the, the purchase would mostly be for customization for or personalization, right? So I think that's a good model to um, on how to use in-app purchases. Uh, okay, and um, we also have settings, right? Well, this V1 won't have settings, so this would be our V1, right? But I was thinking about a little farther down the line if we were to integrate uh, the ability to customize the timers and stuff like that, we want people to be able to uh, get to a settings screen, right? So one way to do that is I could just put like a gear icon up here, right? I could just put it in the upper right corner or left corner and they would tap that little button and they would like flip over and they'd see options like maybe a table view uh, or another way that I'm thinking about doing it instead is for you to be able to just use your thumb and slide up and this whole screen would kind of slide up to reveal a settings screen and then you can pull it back down uh, you can pull the timer screen back down. So it's almost as if like the, the setting screen is behind this timer screen. But then I thought a little farther ahead and I was like, where would I keep the friends list and all that stuff? Um, because we haven't exactly ironed out which features are gonna make the cut and into which phases of the project, I decided not to uh, go that far and let my mind um, think that far ahead because I, one of my flaws, I, I feel like if I analyze something too much and I think too much, uh, it end up 
ends up paralyzing me and I end up not getting anything done or just wasting a lot of time. And time is, is kind of short right now. Um, and as, as I'm sure it is for you as well. So that's why um, I didn't have as much time to dig into other people's Pomodoro timers as I wanted to. And I wanted to like read the reviews and see what people liked and didn't like about them. I didn't have time to get into that. Life is busy, but you know, we're still going to get this done. That's why we're going to go bite size, you know? So let me just save this file. I'm going to put it on the desktop and just call it like Palm Timer Wireframes V1. So it's literally just going to be as simple as that. I think where, you know, just because it looks simple doesn't mean it's not going to be good, right? Um, it, it really depends what what the like what goal you're trying to achieve for the person so for me when I when I download these apps and I want to use a Pomodoro timer I want to use a Pomodoro timer I don't want all of to get through all of these menus just to get the timer I want to know exactly how to start and stop my timer right so for me the number one rule needs to be like usability uh, and user experience the second rule would be um, how does it feel right is it smooth uh, animations, I really like animations, so I'm going to try and incorporate that. So e even though it's like simple, there are subtle animations you can add to it to make it feel like a high quality product. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be going for. Um, yeah, so that that is where I'm going to leave the wireframes now. Um, next, I'm going to show you guys how I achieved the background timer. So just to give you guys a little bit of um, background on background. Uh, on how I initially thought about running this timer. So in case you guys haven't used the timer class yet, uh, when you run a timer and it starts counting down, if you switch apps, that timer is going to stop running. It doesn't continue running in the background. There are certain things that you can do in the background um, that Apple lets your app do. You have you have to request, not request, but you have to turn these capabilities on. So for example, your app could fetch some data in the background so that when the user launches it, it has fresh data. Uh, your app in the background can continue to receive location updates. So you see apps like Google Maps, for example, um, they still send you notifications about upcoming turns and stuff because it's still tracking your location even though the app's in the background. However, um, that so so thinking along that line that's how i first thought about doing the background timer um, the fact that i want it to continue running even if you switch apps i was thinking oh how do i keep a timer running in the background but upon googling a lot and, and um, finding some stack overflow posts people then clued me in um, and i didn't have to ask any questions because this was pretty a common use case right People were saying that you shouldn't have to run a timer in the background, right? Instead, what you do is you, uh, let's say we have this countdown timer for 25 minutes. Instead, what you do is you take note of um, basically when is the 25 minutes over. So let's say it's one o'clock right now. So the timer should go off at 125. So you take note of that time. And then um, when the app goes into the background, you save that time. And then when the app comes back into the foreground, you pull that time back up from storage and you check the current time. Oh, if it's past, then you know the timer's gone past. But if it's still, let, let's say 112 or 113 or 115, you know, it's not quite 125 yet, then you know to resume your timer with 10 minutes left. So you're not actually running any timers in the background. You're just keeping track of a timestamp, right? And I thought, wow, that's completely true, right? That's brilliant. <laughs> so that's basically what I tested out in my demo and it works beautifully. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. And we have half an hour left, so I might move a little quick. So I have Xcode open here. Let me just check that I have this on the screen so nothing is blocking. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start with a single view app and I'm just going to call this a timer demo. <laughs> three because I did run a couple of tests 
here. It's funny because I, I actually I actually get a lot of questions on YouTube like how does your simulator run so fast? How does your Xcode launch so fast? The truth is is that it doesn't, you know. Everyone has to go through these wait times, but Adrian in post production edits um, edits it so that oh what an internal error occurred editing functionality may be limited. Let me try and restart Xcode. <sighs> Perfect time, Xcode, to not work right in front of a live stream. All right, thank you, Xcode, for pulling through. So I'm gonna add a label, and I'm just going to uh, center this label in the screen, and then I'm going to add a button, and this isn't, I'm not building the app right now. It's more like I wanna show you guys how to solve that problem of keeping a timer in the background. And this is gonna be quick and dirty, I'm gonna warn you. So uh, if there are certain things that I'm doing that you're like, why you know, why is he doing that? This is kind of questionable. It is because it is questionable. I'm gonna do things quick and dirty and not follow best practices because then um, A, it would make it harder to follow for you and B, uh, it would just take a lot more time. So I'm just gonna try and go fast with this. So I've got the label and the button here. I'm going to connect it as a IB outlet property. I'm gonna call them label and button. So th this is not what you would wanna call your <laughs> labels and buttons. And actually I'm gonna also connect a uh, IB action handler so that you can, so that we can uh, do something when the button is tapped. All right, so let's go back into the view controller here. All right, so now we're gonna set up our properties. What we're gonna need is, uh, we're gonna need a timer. So this is going to be the timer that ticks every second and it's gonna kind of decrement that time when the app is active. We're also gonna need an end date. So when the user, whoops, it's gonna be a date. When the user starts the timer, we set the end date. And that's basically the date which, the date time which the timer should expire. And then we're also gonna keep track of another variable and this one is gonna call, I'm gonna call it seconds left. And this is going to be a time interval which is just, it's expressed in seconds. It's like a number of seconds and Excuse me, I'm gonna set that to 100 to begin with for this demo. All right, and we're gonna create a couple of different functions here first. So let's create this uh, here. I've got timer functions. I'm gonna put this under user interaction. So for timer functions, I'm gonna create a couple here. Uh, timer start, and I have timer pause. And you have timer, whoops, uh, timer end. And I'm also going to have uh, timer fired or timer tick. So each second is going to be a timer tick. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is when the button, sorry, when the, yeah, when the button is tapped, we have a couple of different scenarios, right? So A is like timer is, uh, timer hasn't been run. And the way we can detect that is we can just see if this timer variable is nil, right? If it has never been set, if we've never assigned a timer object to this property here, then that means the timer is like brand new and hasn't started. So in that case, we would start the timer, right? So we can say if timer is nil, then the timer hasn't been run. Uh, in this case, we would say, we would create a timer. So timer equals timer scheduled timer. And we're going to use this one right here where we can set a time interval for each tick, the target, uh, is self and the selector 
is going to be the, the function you want to fire whenever that interval occurs. So every second, we want uh, which function are we going to run? And that's this one here called timer tick. So we're just going to put that right there. Uh, user info is going to be nil and repeats is going to be true. So we want this to keep repeating. Now, uh, this selector is going to complain because this this hashtag selector, um, this is an objective C thing and this timer tick function is a Swift function. So if you want to make this available to those Objective C uh, runtimes, you have to add this. And even if you didn't know that, that's fine. You all you have to do is click that error, and there's going to be like a little fix it button. And when you click, it's going to tell you what's wrong. When you click it, it's actually just going to add this Objective C tag in front of that function to expose this particular function to uh, this hashtag selector. All right, so create timer and run it. We're going to also want to set an end date, right? So our end date property is just going to be equal to the current date and time. If you create a new date object, it's just going to be automatically uh, initialized to the current date and time. So we're going to do that and we're going to add a time interval to it and we're going to add seconds left so it's going to add 100 seconds to the current date and time and set that as the time when the timer will run out and we also want to update the label so this I'm going to create a separate function I'll call it update label and let's create that function right here So we have a property for the label. We're going to set the text property to a string. Uh, we're going to convert the time interval to a string. So that's seconds left. And we're also going to wrap that inside a round statement because um, as you're going to see when we're working with the date and we're subtracting other dates and other intervals, we're going to have decimal places. And I just want to show uh, the number of seconds. So I'm just going to round it here. All right, so just to recap, uh, when the user taps on that button and there's no timer, it's going to schedule a timer right, to tick every second. And then uh, we're going to set an end date and we're going to update the label. All right, so inside here, inside the timer tick, so this happens every second, right? Decrement the seconds left. So seconds left minus equals one. And we're also going to uh, update the label or maybe the UI. We only have a label to update anyways. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, check if timer has expired. So if the number of seconds is less than or equal to zero, then pretty much the timer has expired. So we're going to call the timer end method, which we haven't implemented yet. Right? It's still empty like that. Okay, so this is what happens every second. It's just going to minus one from the seconds left. Um, and it's going to update the label so we see in the UI and it's going to check if the timer has expired. So, so far, I think this is pretty intuitive, right? There's one thing I forgot to do, which is update the text of the label. And this would be uh, button dot set title. I'm going to call this um, pause because we just started it, right? So I'm just going to run the app now so I can show you what this sort of basic thing looks like. Okay, while that's launching and that's booting up, I'm going to configure something else. So in the view did load, I want to configure uh, initial, initial state of the label and button. So I'm just going to say label, well, I can just call update label. 
And for the button, I'm going to set the uh, set title to start. All right, so I'm just going to run it again now. It's just going to be really quick. So we have 100 seconds. We have start. When I hit start, um, that's going to start ticking down. But here, check this out. If I send the app into the background uh, and then I bring it back into the foreground, you're going to see that the timer actually doesn't run. So let's do it at here. It's probably at 84 now. So I'll let a couple of seconds pass. And then if you launch it, it's still at C84. So time basically, the timer stops. And we don't want that to happen. And also, nothing happens when we press pause right now because we haven't implemented that. So let's quickly implement that. So when the timer pauses, what's going to happen? Well, when the timer pause, we're going to kill the timer. So first, we need to stop the timer, calling the invalidate method on it. And then we are going to, we're not, yeah, we're just going to stop the timer. Uh, reset the end date because the end date was set if the timer, like when the timer is running, right? But if you pause the timer, then that's going to change the end date. And so we have to just set that to nil. Okay, so update the button text. And then we're just going to set the button text. Whoops. Set title to uh, continue. All right, so this would be the timer pause. Now, when the button is tapped, how do we check for that state where um, the, the timer is currently paused? Well, we would do it this way. Else if the timer is not equal to nil, right? because there is a timer object, we've merely stopped it. Um, and the end date is nil, right? There's no end date because we've 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 set it to nil when the the user hit pause, right? Um, so in this case, um, that means it's currently paused. Sorry, I need to wrap my head around it. Currently paused. And else, if if the timer is not nil and the end date is also not nil, then this is uh, currently running. So what do we want to happen if it's currently running and you hit the button, right? We want to pause it, right? So you would call uh, timer pause here. And if it's currently paused and the user just tapped the button, then what would you want to do? You want to restart the timer. Uh, this code right here, when I put the timer hasn't been run, uh, this chunk of code for creating the timer and setting the end date and updating the label and updating the button text, I'm actually going to move that into the timer start function. That's what <laughs> that's what I created that for. So all of that code is in here. So when the user hits the button, here we just call timer start. Right, so if the timer hasn't been run yet, we want to call timer start, which is going to start the timer, set the end date, update the label, update the button. If the timer is currently paused, we also want to do the same thing. So that's why you know, we're going to be able to merge these two clauses. Uh, and then if it's currently running and the user taps on the button, then we want to pause it. All right, so I hope I haven't confused you guys. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to merge it with this if if statement. All I'm going to do is use an OR clause and put it into these brackets here. So timer hasn't been run or timer is currently paused. Either case is the same to us because we're going to need to set a new end date uh, based on the seconds that are left um, when the user hits start. So let me let me show you guys this. Let me run it right now and show you that we have pausing working. 
So all of this is just starting the timer and pausing it and stopping it. We haven't actually gone to the part yet where we send it to the background and still have the timer running. We're gonna get to that in just a second. All right, so I'm gonna hit pause and it's stopped at 89. And then when you hit continue, uh, based on the 87 or 80 whatever seconds were left, it sets a new end date. Okay, so that's what happened. So we have pausing and uh, continuing and starting working now. So what happens when the timer ends? Let's do that. Let's kill the timer by doing timer.invalidate and let's uh, reset the timer, reset the end date, update the button text. So we are going to assign nil to our timer property. End date is gonna be nil and the button text is going to be uh, restart. All right, so I'm gonna set the seconds to 10 so that we can actually take a look at this. All right, so we've got 10 seconds. I'm gonna start running it right now. Six, five, four, three, two. All right, so it stops uh, and then we hit restart. Is it gonna do anything if we hit that? Yeah, so if we hit restart right now, it's gonna come into this if clause. It's gonna see that timer is nil and it's gonna do timer start. So I'm gonna hit restart. Oh, <laughs> we, didn't, uh, we didn't reset the number of seconds. That's the problem here. Um, so <laughs> we basically set uh, hard code the number of seconds. Like obviously for our real app, we wouldn't do this because right now I'm just like resetting it to 10 or 100 and we would actually be using constants as well. So we wouldn't be just hard coding numbers in here. But for the purpose of this demo, that is fine to me. All right, so now let's implement the part where the timer goes into the background and it's still running. Because right now, if I show it to you, as I demonstrated it before, if I send the timer to the background, it stops running, right? So we want it to continue to run. And so the technique that we're going to use is there are two functions which we're going to make use of. Uh, one is that the system detects when your app moves to the background and you have a chance to actually uh, perform some operations. So at that point in time, when our app is going to move to the background, we're gonna check what state the timer is in. If the timer is currently running like it is now, we are going to take the end date uh, and we're going to save it into local user defaults. So it's just local storage on the device. Um, and then when the app comes back into the foreground, again, we can detect that, and then we will check local storage for that end time, and we're gonna compare it with the current date and time. If it's already passed, then we're not gonna do anything. But if it hasn't passed yet, um, then we are going to initialize the timer and start the timer with the number of seconds left between the current date and time and the end date that was saved. So if you didn't get that, don't worry because we're gonna write it out now and it's probably gonna make a lot more sense. So I'm gonna call these a life cycle methods. Um, so I'm just gonna be overriding the view will disappear and the view will uh, appear in here. So the interesting thing to note is that um, Sending your app into the background and bring it back to the foreground doesn't actually trigger these two um, view controller methods. However, if you have a multi-screened app and you're switching between like one view to another view, then it will fire these two. However, um, we are still going to put the code here for this demo. Um, because I just want, I don't want to create a whole bunch of different classes and create a singleton um, for it, but I'm just going to put all the code here. And then 
inside the app delegate, which is actually where those two methods are. Because if you check in the app delegate, you'll find methods like application uh, will resign active. That means your your app is gonna stop becoming the active foreground app and it's going to the background, right? Um, and then this is like when it did enter the background. So there are these different points in time where you can add some code here. This is will enter the foreground and did become active. All right, so these are the methods we're gonna take advantage of um, to do that saving of the end date and then restoring of the end date. Um, but I'm, from here, from the app delegate, I'm going to be triggering the view will disappear and the view will appear. But this is not ultimately how we're going to do it. But for this demo, this is what I'm going to do. So we're going to first get a reference to the standard user defaults. Actually, before we do that, we need to check if timer is running, right? So if the timer is not nil and the end date is not nil, then that means that uh, that means that the timer is running. So we're going to save the end date. Uh, we're going to go defaults dot set value. And we're going to put in the end date. And we're going to call the key end date. Now, in a real app, we would not just use strings like that because they're easily, you can create typos. As you can see, we're going to type this string a couple of times. So you do want to use a constant. So when I actually show you guys me building the actual app, you'll see me doing that. But I'm starting to run out of time. So uh, timer is running. So save the end date. And here, uh, check if there's an end date saved. So if let date equals uh, actually, I need to get a reference to the user defaults first. If defaults equals user defaults dot standard defaults dot value for key and date, and we're gonna try and cast this as a date. So if that is not nil, then there's a date. So here we're gonna check if um, if the current date is Oops, the current date is past that date, then uh, timer has expired. But if not, then we are going to get the difference. Get the seconds left. And we're gonna do that by saying uh, date, well let, actually not let, but seconds left is equal to, uh, date uh, time interval since uh, and pass in the current date and this is going to give us the difference between the end date and the current date and time when I say date I also mean date time so the end date and time the difference in seconds to the current date and time so that's then we're gonna set that to seconds left and then what we're going to do is just call timer start. Uh, timer start. And then we are also going to clear the end date from the defaults. So defaults.set value, I'm going to set it to nil for key end date. So you see, we wrote this key three times, and I could have made a typo in any of those. So we will use constants. All right, so I think I think that might be it. Let me just so if the timer is not nil and there is an end date, I mean it's it's currently running, so we should stop it. And we should save the end date. And then when it comes back, we're checking if there is an end date. If the current date is greater than the end date, timer has expired. Else we get the difference and we start the timer. And then we basically 
reset what's in the storage. All right, so that's good. Now the thing to check is like, if we put some breakpoints here, I'm gonna run my app. Um, and we're gonna send it into the background and you guys will see. Okay, so view will appear, does get called when the app initially launches, but let's say I'm running the timer now and I send it into the background, you can see that it doesn't trigger any of these breakpoints, which kind of defeats the purpose, right? Uh, if I bring it back, it doesn't, it hasn't been running in the background um, because we didn't have, you know, we don't have this code in place. So what does get triggered, however, is inside the app delegate here. So let's see which one we want to take advantage of. Send when the application is about to move from active to inactive. Um, blah, 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 blah. Pause ongoing, disable timers, and invalidate graphics, such as, okay. Did enter background. Use this method to release shared re resources, invalidate timers, and store enough application state information to restore your application to its current state in case it is terminated later. All right, so that's this is where we're going to do it. So here we're going to, now this is not what we're going to do in our real app, but I'm going to label this hack. Um, force view will dis appear to be called from in our view controller. So we are going to get a reference to that root view controller and we are going to call begin appearance transition. Tells a child view controller its appearance is about to change. And so this kind of allows us to trigger that. So is appearing is, tr uh, sorry, is false because it's disappearing and animated is false. And then we also have to match that with a, uh, sorry, not begin, but this one, the cl closing one would be end appearance transition. All right, so this, uh, now when it enters the background, it's going to call this code, and this is going to trigger the view will disappear, which is gonna run our code here. And I'll tell you in a second in the um, in the real app how I'll be doing it instead of this way. Call this part of the transition from background to active state. Restart any tasks that were paused. So this is where we're going to do it here. Again, we are going to hack force view will appear to be called in our view controller window root view controller begin appearance transitioning. This time it's true because it is appearing. And then the close, uh, the other pair of this is end appearance transition. All right, now it's time to run it and I can show you how this works. Because now it will be triggering view will disappear and uh, disappear and view will appear. So let me put some breakpoints here. Let me start the timer here. So it, the, the end date and time is set to 100 seconds from now. I'm going to send this to the background at 90, let's say. Uh, sorry for the lawnmower. Someone's running a lawnmower. All right, view will disappear. So this is triggered, right? It's going to detect that there is a timer and there is an end date. It's going to stop the timer, and then it's going to set the end date into the defaults like that. And then we can wait like a couple of seconds. All right, and then you can see that we'll, view will appear is called, and then it's gonna check the date inside the local storage. It's gonna see that it hasn't passed yet, and now it's gonna calculate the number of seconds left. So we can uh, take a look at that. Seconds left is 50, um, because we as it's been paused, it's still been going, right? So timer start, and it, it's gonna resume. Um, let me remove this, these breakpoints. Oh, you know what I did? Inside the timer start method, I hard-coded the number of seconds to 100. We need to remove this line. 
So this line, let's do it. We're just going to reset the number of seconds when the timer ends. All right, so let's run it and I'll show you. This is how you uh, do the timer in the background. All right, so like 95, and then we're gonna send it into the background. We'll wait a couple of seconds. I'm gonna bring it back and you can see that it's like 86 now. So that's how that works. Now, like I said, uh, well, it is 2 o'clock now, but I'm going to keep going. If you guys can stay, you guys are welcome to stay. Um, I just want to finish explaining how um, kind of like some of the th shortcuts that we took in this demo just to show you guys how this works versus when we are building the real app, how we're going to be um, keeping track of that time. So the, the, con the concept is the same. You know, keeping the timestamp in the back. I keep looking down here. I'm sorry, but the camera's up here. Uh, we are going to be keeping the date in the in the local storage when the app goes into the background. Same thing. But in this demo, just for speed and for understandability, I put all of the code inside this view controller, right? That's not what we want to do. So when we're building this out for real, I'm going to have a singleton, like Pomodoro timer class. Um, and that is going to be keeping track of the timers and the end dates and stuff like that. Now, singletons get a bad rap, right? So you want to make sure that you are like you're justified in using it. And the way that I justify in using it for this app is because we're not just going to be having this view controller here um, be the only view in this app, right? There's a setting screen when we do the social stuff. There's going to be like social screens and stuff like that. But um, your timer should still be running, right? If you set a, set a Pomodoro for like 25 minutes and then you go to a different screen, the timer shouldn't stop, right? It should continue running. And so that's why I can't put the timer in any specific view controller like that. And the other reason why is because inside the app delegate, this is where, sorry, those methods are for detecting the application going to the background and coming into the foreground and stuff like that. And so, I don't want to do like this sort of hack here where I'm forcing the view controller to to like think that it is uh, view will disappear, view will appear, and that it is transitioning. And but if I have my timer stuff inside a singleton class, then it will also be accessible from here. So that's my thinking right now. That's I haven't actually done it yet, but so far that's kind of my line of thought. Uh, if you guys want this source code, I will make it available. But like I said, don't follow any of the practices I did here. It's more for you examining kind of like the timer, uh, keeping track of timers in the background. All right. So don't take this like, oh, this is what I should do because Chris is doing it in here. That's <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So that's all I wanted to show you guys this video. Uh, I'm going to take one minute to talk about uh, going forward, kind of like what my next steps are, and then I'm gonna take a look at what questions you ha you, ha uh, you guys have. So I said I wanted to submit this app by the end of the month, which is like a week away, so I don't think that is feasible anymore. I'm gonna give myself like another half week, but we're not gonna have another live stream till next Wednesday, right? Uh, and I also want the, uh, this process of creating this V1 of the Pomodoro app to be a video series which I can send people to to watch, right? So my plan is basically to do the actual coding of and applying the uh, um, graphic assets to the Pomodoro app inside like structured videos where you know I do an introduction and then I do the code and I do a conclusion type of thing. And I'm gonna put that into a video playlist and then I'm also going to mention if you guys want to see kind of the behind the scenes and the thought and like the making of almost, you know how like in a DVD, Blu-ray, uh, sometimes they have behind the scenes or making of. That's kind of like not the core feature presentation, but if you want to know more. So I'm going to have this, these live streams as that because we're not actually building the app here, right? We're talking about ideation, wireframing, um, the thought process behind it. Like, how this app came to be. 
Uh, so I'm going to leave the actual production of the app, like coding it, um, in inside structured videos, which won't be a live stream. And then when we get to submitting this app, I will do a live stream again. So between now and next Wednesday, I'm going to try to actually build this app out. Um, I'm going to produce a set of videos for it. Um, which I'm going to launch to you guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to launch it like Netflix style so that you can binge it. And it's not going to be long anyways. I think it's going to be like maybe four or five videos long or whether I should space it out because uh, that way <laughs> that way I have more content each week, right? And I know for you guys, you probably want it all at once. Uh, I'll see where I get with that in the next week and a half. I do want to launch it in the next week and a half. So not in the next live stream, but probably the one after that, we will press submit together. I'll show you guys, I'll walk you guys through uh, creating the iTunes Connect app description and the screenshots and all that stuff. And then we're gonna hit submit together and we're gonna launch this baby. Um, but as for the actual videos for um, coding it up, so that's gonna be released from now, anytime from now to a week and a half later, um, yeah. So those won't be live streams. So those would be like concise videos. And for anyone who wants to see the making of or behind the scenes, they can watch these live streams, the replays of them. All right, so now on to questions for you guys. Questions from you guys, let me take a look. Oh, Igor, thanks. Thanks for letting me know that the volume is too low. I will, I will probably put my mic down here next time so that it's more more in the direct line of where I'm talking. Okay, let me move, let me move up here. Uh, if you guys have questions now, maybe you can, maybe you retype them or next time I might have Adrian put the questions in a separate list or something like that. So I, I'm not scrolling through the chat. Uh, see Steve, Figma is unlimited for like individuals. So if you're building apps for yourself, it's perfect. Uh, I think most of these questions are being answered anyways. So if you have a question that hasn't been answered, maybe type it in and for those, for those of you who have to leave now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining the live stream, and I'll see you guys next week. But in the meantime, keep your eyes peeled for um, the actual development videos from now to Wednesday. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you don't want to miss those videos. Uh, so just in case some, some of you guys have to leave, thanks for joining, and I'll see you guys next time. If you have a chance to stay, then go ahead. Okay, not too many questions this time because I guess I was just like typing and, and showing you guys how to do stuff. But, all right, so thank, uh, thank you so much again for joining. Doesn't look like there are any questions left unanswered. I really appreciate you guys um, and I can't wait to submit more apps and build more apps with you guys. All right, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye for now.